Hello and welcome back to the Lore Raider and happy holidays to all my loyal followers and new viewers as well. Thank you all for not only helping me reach 400 subscribers, but for doing your part in watching Zeratone's message to the Metroid fandom. It's been doing great so far, so again, we both appreciate it. But now I must do what I promised to do, and that is complete the Challenge Run Trilogy. So, join me today as we ask the question, can you beat Metroid for the NES? With only missiles? The rules are simple, if slightly changed around. 1. We can only kill using missiles. 2. Every time we encounter a door for the first time, it must be opened with the missiles. After that, we can use the regular beam. And number 3. No game-breaking glitches, which is especially relevant in OG Metroid for anyone who's played it. So, without the way, let's get into it. So, let's talk early strategy. The original Metroid is a janky piece of garbage held together by duct tape in the hopes and dreams of Japanese developers. Samus cannot aim up or down, and that means I cannot kill any enemy that would nip at her ankles. Also, NES Metroid starts you off with only 30 health, and that means to get to the first missile pack and for much of the game, or the early game at least, you have to tank with a character that isn't that good of a tank. And as you will now see, I die a lot. With the death montage over, I make my way to Norfa to try and get the missiles at the top right corner before we enter the free pack to the left, which I grab, before heading back to the right and devil several more goddamn times, trying to get across. Only once I get there do I realize I cannot jump high enough to get up there and lock the HP for some kind of damage boost, meaning I need the high jump boots which are locked behind a missile door and would waste literally all my missiles. I then also realized I also need the bomb, which is behind several more doors, and I miss the doors as well, which takes five missiles. So we can safely say that we've failed the run, and that you cannot beat Metric for the NES with only missiles. But wait! NES Metroid runs on a password system. It's been discovered that entering certain codes can start you off in different ways. Now, if I were to simply get every upgrade in the game, that would violate rule number 3 of the rules and that would kill the spirit of the run, as it would be a game-breaking exploit. However, I don't consider the password system in of itself a glitch. It is clearly a feature of NES Metro, kind of like Gen 1 Pokemon's badge boost glitch. Anyway, I insert this specific code that gives me 255 missiles and nothing more. My goal now is to go get the bombs and the first energy tank, round back around to get the ice beam, and then head for Norfair and attempt to get to Ridley and beat him. This is harder than you think. The game doesn't truly register that I have the missiles, so I cannot see what amount I have, meaning I'm always gambling trying to kill enemies. Secondly, if you pick up this missile pack here, or any missile pack, the game shows you your total, but it also means enemies can now drop missile items which, if you pick it up, will set you back down to 5 missiles and 5 missiles only, and then immediately end your run. Meaning, I need to get to Ridley, with 1 energy tank, no various suit, no extra missile packs, whilst gambling the amount of missiles I have, but I can't see him. It isn't easy. Norfair enemies pack a quite a punch, and I died, repeatedly, to these damn ball things. But eventually, I get to Ridley, and Samus's vicious nemesis and I do battle in a one-on-one -on -one close quarters combat to the death as I take only one hit and I... I won? I, I won! The run is alive! So the rest of the run is easy, right? <laughs> no. But nonetheless, I grab the energy tank you get after beating Ridley before making my way back to Upper Norfair with barely any health to spare to grab the three missile tanks that sit in the top right corner of that area. I then purposely die to respawn by the Upper Norfair elevator and return to Brimstar, where I go and not only collect the missile tank I skipped at the very beginning of the game, but then also go and collect the various suit from the top of Brimstar, but I do leave the energy tank up there alone for now. Turning around, I make the trip to Craig's Lair and grab another energy tank, for making my way close to his boss room. I want to state here and now I did use save states as getting one 
perfect run of this challenge is next to impossible. Why? Because grinding these stupid, incessant bug things is so freaking random you have to pray for good RNG. But finally, after an ungodly amount of save state scumming and loading, I confront Kraid. Who was shockingly easy. I was scared it would be a fan tune situation in my Super Metroid run, where I'd have to use an item, say the Ice Beam in this case, to freeze his projectiles. But nonetheless, everything worked out. Well, after being hit by and damaged by every known type of vermin known to science, I make it back up to Brinstar and grab the sixth and final energy tank and head for the final area of the game, Torian. Torian is not free. You see, you'll want to kill the Metroids going the path to Mother Brain. However, there is no rhyme or reason to what they'll drop, and you can quickly find yourself having to reset if your RNG is bad enough. When you run out of missiles, like I find myself having done in my first run of Torian. With no missiles, there's no way to move forward, and it's a forced reset. By the way, I am allowed to freeze Metroids in these runs, as it is impossible to kill them with the Ice Beam, and also impossible to beat these games without killing them, so, I mean, forced compromise. On the second run of Torian, I grind on the Metroids with better luck before trying to confront Mother Brain herself. However, I at first try to beat the boss with no use of the Ice Beam, meaning not freezing the little donut things. However, I get absolutely pummeled to hell and backed by the stupid laser donuts, and by the time I make it to her, I'm as good as dead with barely any missiles. I had to reset. I return and grind the Metroids until I'm at max before trying the fight again, doing the best I can to only freeze the donuts and not kill them. Finally, I got Mother Brain in my crosshairs. The freezers are working and... Sh she's dead? All that's left is to climb up the escape hatch before the self-destruct counter reaches zero. And once we reach the top, Samus' final message plays and we can confirm that with an absolutely ungodly amount of RNG luck and a little help from the password system that you can barely beat Metroid for the NES with only missiles. I don't wish this challenge on my worst enemy. But still, I hope you enjoyed me doing these challenge runs for the original Metroid trilogy, and the other two can be found in a dedicated playlist which is in the channel description. Again, happy holidays to all my new fans and old fans alike, and you know how I leave you. Until then, be safe, be wise, and please have a happy holiday.